We are looking at a, a national infrastructure pipeline uh, investment profile of close to about a 90,000 crores by 2025, which means we've got a very ambitious pipeline of close to about 18,000 crores uh, per annum uh, over the next four to five years. Um, we And the divide uh, within that 18,000 crores is close to about 30% uh, with government and about 70% with the private sector. So uh, we have close to about 15 new airports uh, coming up on a PPP model as we speak. Uh, the prominent among those are the Navi Mumbai Airport, Jaywar Airport, uh, Mopa Airport in Goa, and another 10 or 12 that are being rolled out as we speak. Uh, I really believe that the potential for civil aviation is now going to come not from the mature metro airports uh, alone, so whether it's Delhi going from the current 70 million passengers to 100 million passengers or the current Bombay going from close to about 45, 50 million passengers, capacity being augmented to close to about 70, 75 million and a new airport being built. But it's also going to come from the hinterland. Uh, so let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, hitherto unserved airports or unconnected airports like Jharsuguda in Orissa, Darbanga, uh, for example, or Rupsi in, in Assam. Uh, today, uh, you have uh, uh, traffic of close to about one and a half to two lakh passengers per month coming from these airports, which were not connected at all. And so there is a transportation revolution slowly taking place in our country. As you see, uh, the uh, economic model of civil aviation change, economic, the civil aviation sector used to be looked at as a very elitist form of travel. Today, where, from where you're going from a low volume, high margin, earlier model uh, in civil aviation to a high volume, low margin, ticket fares are uh, falling exponentially, allowing the common man to travel and therefore PM's, uh, uh, the Prime Minister's uh, uh, commitment that Hawaii chappal wale bhi Hawaii jahaz se safar kare, uh, Udaan standing for Ude Desh ka Aam Nagrik, you're seeing a tremendous fillip coming uh, to civil aviation from travel from interstate as well as intrastate, which is a new model that's being developed within India. Well, I think uh, in life, uh, uh, life is not worth living if you are not faced with challenges. Uh, but let me say this, that in the last four months that uh, uh, I have been um, carrying out the responsibility that has been given to me by the Prime Minister, uh, I have had a uh, uh, wonderful experience in terms of my uh, conversations with uh, state chief ministers, trying to work with them, because at the end of the day, we are not on opposite ends of the table. We are both on the same side of the table. And therefore, I have made it uh, my imperative to reach out to every chief minister uh, uh, with regard to not only um, airport infrastructure, uh, air connectivity, but also in terms of making this sector more robust. Uh, and I think uh, uh, what I outlined that uh, we are working together towards that's, that imperative and that goal. And therefore, even with our stakeholders, be it airlines, be it airport operators, uh, be it MRO service companies, be it flying training organizations, be it cargo handlers, be it ground handlers, the whole ecosystem is one which is primed to ensure that state GDP rises and the national GDP rises. And therefore, government's role, uh, at least in this sector, is moving away from being uh, uh, an RR to a CC. Uh, and therefore, uh, let me clarify what I mean by that, a moving away from being a restrictive regulator to uh, a constructive uh, uh, a coordinator or a facilitator. Uh, and I think in that effort, uh, I must thank uh, all the state governments as well. We have been working together in a very coordinated effort. I have had multiple conversations with almost uh, 12 to 14 chief ministers to date. Uh, I have written to almost 29. Uh, that process of uh, video conferencing is on as we speak looking at every single detailed airport, the issues that need to be identified, what needs to be done, air connectivity, as well as the initiative that I've taken 
uh, under my wing um, with regard to lowering VAT on ATF. And with that regard, I think uh, I must, through you, uh, thank the governments of uh, and the union territories of Andaman and Nicobar, of JNK, of Ladakh, the state governments of Uttarakhand, uh, the state governments of uh, uh, Haryana, uh, who have taken a huge step in lowering uh, VAT on ATF in their states from uh, prohibitive almost 25 to 30 percent down to 1 to 2 percent. And the dividends of that are already being experienced by state governments. More airlines are flying to those states. More aircrafts are being refueled in those states. And therefore, the economic Laffer curve argument of lowering tax rates resulting in buoyancy of revenues is also being experienced by these states. And in, in, in conclusion, let me just say this, that the civil aviation sector is a sector that carries with it not only connectivity between peoples within states, across states, across the globe, but also carries along with it huge economic dividends in terms of economic growth. When you provide connectivity, it brings along with it economic investment. It brings along with it uh, revenue uh, growth for states through tourism. And therefore, this will be a huge fillip to multiple state governments in increasing state GDP as well. And therefore, uh, uh, it's been a, a very constructive dialogue and something that I, uh, I have much appreciated. And I must thank all state governments for uh, coordinating and working with us to ensure that we have the state goal as well as the national goal in mind as we progress forward.